just waiting for the buzz. Oh, yeah. Nothing, you keep trying to say yeah. shit about my fucking kick. And you annoying me and aggravating me. On your wrist, a plain giant. Standing at the bus stop, sucking on a lollipop. Once she gets pumping, it's hard to make the hottie stop. Hottie stop, stop, stop. You ready? All right, now. <laughs> this could be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we have some syrup to get into. We're getting into my own syrup, okay? I am a journalist. I am a journalist and a commentator, but I have no problem with taking on the responsibility of actually being a journalist. Some people call themselves a commentator because they don't want the responsibility of if they say something wrong, the liability falls back on them. But I am a journalist, and honestly, the number one rule to journalism is to never become the story. <laughs> never become the story. But I'm here to tell my own story because although this is something that, you know, maybe kind of started, if you read the description box, it's very short, sweet, and simple. It's, this this issue has been, um, it's been going on for three years now. And it is, it's, it's still happening. And it's very sad that it has to be that way. Um, but I just received a text message that I would typically find to be alarming but it falls right into the character of this guy that I used to date a while ago. I'm used to it. He's been stalking me for three years. He won't stop communicating with me. Um, I haven't said a word to him since I filed the restraining order and the restraining order was granted and he just won't stop. And I feel that this is a moment where I can be transparent and relatable with my audience. Um, and we can just kind of talk as black women or black people um, about our safety and how to move on from people who don't want to move on from you, people who can't accept rejection. So that's what this is. Leo, yes, what's going on? What are you doing? This is not about you. Leo, Leo, what are you doing? How about you get back up here? Because you can't do this. You... I the cat thinks it's about him. It's not about him, okay? All in all, I hope y'all are having an amazing weekend. This is a long weekend if your job um, recognizes the 4th of July as a holiday to actually let you off of work. My job does. <laughs> so this is a long weekend for me. And I hope that y'all have had an amazing weekend. I have. I've gotten a lot of good reflection done. I've gotten some good me time done. I have um, I spent some time doing my nails. I did my little nails, got my little white in the French on the index fingers going on. So I really had a, a good weekend. I've had some me time, watched some new films. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I've, I've, I've tweeted about this situation recently, right? But if you're a channel member, you know that I have been talking about this story. Um, you, you, you may have heard me mention a time or two, right? If you're one of the backstage members. Um, mentioned this this crazy ex of mine who literally refuses to stop contacting me because he's upset that I don't want to deal with him anymore. Um, it's not conducive for either one of us. Um, where do I start? The thing about it is I, I'm, I'm not used to doing a video where I don't, I haven't aligned my talking points, right? And I have not aligned my talking points. I'm just here to speak about this situation because I see um, I see that he's not going to stop. Right. Um, and, and, you know, and, and he wants to continue. So thank you so much to everybody in the chat and especially my channel members. Um, thank you for hitting thumbs up on the video to start. Right. I received a text message about like an hour or two ago and it basically said, listen, I'm going to find someone on YouTube. I'm going to find someone that doesn't like you on YouTube and I'm going to tell them to expose you. And I'm going to tell them about your mental health issues, about the issues you have with your mom. I'm going to tell them that your brother molested you. And I'm going to tell them that you have a drinking issue and that you drink and allow men to have their way with you. Right? Let's be clear. I've never been molested in my life. I have three siblings. I have two sisters and I have a brother. 
One from my mom, two from my dad. I've never been molested. You have to be an evil son of a bitch to make up and send someone information about my brother molesting me when I've never been molested in my life. We're talking about a man who is so obsessed, who is 40 years old. This is somebody who in, in a couple of years, he needs to be worrying about applying for his AARP card to make sure that he can get a free stack of pancakes from IHOP and shit, right? And he's hell bent on stalking me because it's been years and I still want nothing to do with him. How evil do you have to be to make up that a sim that I that I've been molested at all, but that my brother did it? Even if it was true, and it's not, I have no problem admitting if I had been because that would be a relatability moment where I would be able to talk and incur. You know, I write my sticky notes because I, you know, I, I like to motivate and inspire people based off of the hurdles that I have overcame. So if it were true, I wouldn't have a problem with 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 coming clean about it. But a even if it was true, imagine someone thinking that that's T. I'm going to expose Jane by telling the world that her brother molested her. And it's not true. But if it was, what the hell? We're talking about a man. We're talking about a man who, after we broke up, he would call my mother's house, my mother, and say, hey, Jane be drinking and getting out, getting drunk out of her mind and she be letting all the men sleep with her and hang up. And my mother would call me like, what the hell is this? We're talking about a man who consistently called my mother's house almost every other day for two, almost three months straight to call my mother's house and say, your daughter's a slut and she drinks and lets men sleep with her. We're talking about a man who slashed my tires four times in one week. Because I have enough disposable income to the point where if I come outside and I see two flat tires, I can replace them in the same day and go on about my business. Every time I would get them replaced, he would slash them again. We're talking about a man who wrote on my apartment door at my previous address because he's so upset that I don't want to deal with it any anymore. And I changed my locks. A 40-year-old man who came to my door and wrote with an extra large Sharpie, a slut lives here. He's so upset at me not wanting to deal with him anymore. And this is what he's doing in his new tactic because he knows the only way he can get a visual of me is on YouTube is, well, I'm going to find someone that's going to expose you and, and, and expose you with this information that I'm going to give them, which is not true. This is the type of person that we're talking about. If I'm such a slut, if I'm such a pass around, why do you continue to contact me? You just sent me a text message an hour and a half ago saying, you've gained weight. You've got issues with your mom, your brother's mom. Yeah, I've, I've gained weight. Oh, okay, and why are you still looking and bothered? It's been three plus years, bruh. You're 10 years older than me. I don't even like bringing up my age much on the internet, but there it is. He's 40 and he's 10 years older than me. Why can't you leave me alone and find something to do? Why have you not found another woman to fall in love with? That you can be busy with your woman, your job. You're still busy stalking me and you think that coming through my phone, because again, he texts me from these burner numbers that he creates. Every week, every time I get a new text message from him, I block it. He makes up a new one. You're still sending me dick pics. I don't want them. He'll send messages as if we still talk, you know, just explicit nonsense. He's obsessed. And his goal is to find someone or if, you know, let's just say there was somebody that existed on YouTube, which there is, who is obsessed with me. Let me find someone who's obsessed with her. And let me tell them some made up shit and get them to hurt her feelings. We're talking about a man who literally put his hands on me. Matter of fact, um, let me let me go through some tweets. Let me go through some tweets. Because I literally tweeted about this the other evening. I'll be on Netflix just finding like little different movies to go through. And you can see I tweeted this on June 28th, right? Um, and 
I said, I got into a really good movie on Netflix last night, but despite it being an awesome and very realistic short movie, it triggered the hell out of me. So this was days ago. This is probably almost, what, what is this? The 4th of July, this is on June 28th. This was days ago, but I, I you know, I, I tweeted about this, right? I said, the movie was called Only Mine. And the synopsis is, after dating a charming cop who turns into an obsessive stalker, a small town girl must save herself from his deadly ways. This actually happened to me, minus the fact that he's not a cop. In 2019, and it's either 2019 or 2018, but he's still at it. He called my phone less than 15 minutes after the movie ended, two times in a row at 3.30 a.m., and I block at least 15 different burner phone numbers a week because he still sends me messages and inappropriate pictures. It's creepy because he'll message me as if we still talk or we casually meet up. And when I say that, I mean, he'll literally be like, he'll come to my phone, had a good time last night, light skin. I need that mouth again with a dick pic, right? And it goes between rage or I'm calm and I'm okay now. For example, Christmas Eve last year, he caught my phone from one of these burning numbers, right? Because obviously he's blocked. Caught my phone. Hey, I hope everything is well. Merry Christmas. I hope everything is okay. Hoping that maybe because he's calm on the phone, I'm going to be stupid enough to to want to wanna talk to him. And then when he realizes, I don't give a fuck if you're being nice, mean, rude, cold, drop dead. He will content. Then he'll get angry. Then he'll come through my phone. You're just a slut. Oh, da, da, da. Block. You sleep with block. It, it's, you're a bitter ex that can't let go. Of course, that shit is not true. But if you feel like coming through my phone every other day, calling me these things and leaving comments under other people's videos about these things, if it'll make you feel better, okay. But I'm not engaging with you. I'm not engaging with that. That is a, a tactic he used to use. Uh, just bring up a mountain of lies and pull me into a conversation because of course I'm gonna refute it, right? Before I was able to, and I was trying to break up with him for six, over six months, I was trying to break up with him. But my life and my safety was in danger. And I couldn't just break up with him. How does it sound saying I couldn't break up with him? But it's the truth. He knew where I worked. He knew where I lived. He knew my schedule. And if I wasn't coddling his feelings, oh, baby, he was getting violent. When I tell you he put his hands on me and hawk spit five times in a row in my face, we're talking about a man who's over six foot tall. This is this is what I'm going through. And this is the message that I literally just got. Right. I said, I found myself trying to break up with him. By the time I realized he was dangerous and toxic for six months, he made it difficult because I was always coddling and I had a typo. I was always coddling, coddling his feelings while neglecting my own in order to keep his anger at bay. Because when he snapped, he snapped. I'm telling you, he slashed my tires. He literally bust my driver's side window because I'm trying to drive away because he was in the middle of an episode of whatever. He felt like he owned me. He felt like I didn't have a right to leave him. And as black women, sometimes when you put your boundaries up, people become angry and they become offended because they're entitled to accessing you. They feel like you don't, you, you're you not allowed to cut me off. They're entitled to the way that they're able to access you. They're entitled to your time. They're entitled to your energy. And so me cutting him off, it threw, if you ever want to see a narcissist lose their fucking mind, if you ever want to see a narcissist lose their mind, take away their ability to, to control whoever or whatever they've been controlling because they relish in their main point of being able to rejoice about something, anything in life is being able to manipulate and control people. And once they lose their ability to control or manipulate people, they throw the biggest temper tantrum. This could be anybody. This could be a family member. This could be a friend. This could be a romantic relationship. This could be anybody. But when they're used to controlling people and they lose that, oh, they lose their minds. They lose their minds. 
And this is literally something I tweeted about the other evening. I said the last time I had to face him or what he's done is when I filed the restraining order. He'd already been physically abusive, slashed my tires, wrote condescending sexual names with an extra large Sharpie on my apartment door and bust the window out of my car and so much more. He didn't want me to pull off. He was trying to stand in front of my car. He would put his hand in, inside of the door so I couldn't shut the door and pull off until I finally got the door shut and he banged on the car door, the, the, the glass to my driver's side window and it shattered everywhere. The police came because the neighbors had heard all the commotion outside. There had been several times when he had put his hands on me and, and, and broke inside of my apartment every time I was at work before I realized he was changed a lot. See, this, this is a man who was 10 years older than me, but I've been on my own since I was 18. I moved out when I was 18 because me and my mother didn't always see eye to eye, but we cool now. But I had to get up out of my people's house. So I've always had my own place to stay as soon as I turned 18. This was a man who's 10 years older than me and had no place to stay. And so when I was done with him, because he was abusive in every way you could imagine, physically, psychologically, emotionally, all that stuff. I put him out. He made it like it was my fault. Oh, you're making me homeless. I'm not making you homeless. I've been telling you for months now that I'm done here and you need to make arrangements to find somewhere else to stay. And so when I finally put that boundary down, he made he, he's blaming me. A man that's, that's a decade older than me. He's like, oh, you want me to sleep in my car? You want me to be out here and get hurt? You want me to take to the streets? You know, I'm not trying to do no street stuff. Da, 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 da. Stealing stuff out my house, stealing money. I mean, all types of stuff. You name it, he's done it. And when I tell you that movie was so triggering it really was stalking is a complete and absolute understatement i found myself sadly resonating with the main character in this film because she would lie to him and pretend to still be interested in a relationship with him in order to survive after realizing she was already knee deep in danger it's it, it's on numerous occasions i've thought he's gonna kill me and sometimes I still believe that to be true because if he ever caught me alone, I don't doubt it. He's furious that I'm no longer under his spell, but anyway, I had to get it out. Feeling safe as, as a black woman is a right, it's not a privilege. This is what I tweeted on June 28th after watching that movie because it was triggering as hell. You find yourself realizing he's going to be in a rage if he realizes you're really done and nobody's around to save you. So... Tell him something sweet, tell him something nice, pretend to still like him. And then when it's safe to finally like leave him, leave. And that's what I did for months. He would come up to my job. He would sit outside my job. He began calling up my job, making up bogus things. Thank God I don't work there anymore. It's a blessing that I, I I had to leave that place of employment while trying to, I had to restart my whole life over because it I was paranoid. It discombobulated me. One time I went to Walmart. He saw me in Walmart with my friend and he thought that that friend was my new boyfriend. And even if it was, so what? But he went into a rage and sent me all these texts from his little burning number. I see you with that new nigga. That new nigga look like he washed paper plates. Um. Okay. It's just very weirdo behavior. The movie on Netflix, it's a good movie, but it, it definitely triggered me. The movie is called Only Mine. And, you know, and, and again, you, you get into the beginning of the movie after dating a charming cop who then turns into an obsessive stalker, right? And this was a person who kept his representative on and, and seemed very, very charming at first. Come to find out they were an obsessive stalker. And I remember the first time I picked up his phone and I looked at the most recent pictures, he was stalking somebody else. I'm like, who was this person in the damn Dunkin' Donuts parking lot that you zooming in on? He's a certified stalker and a crazy person. And a felon. He already had two strikes. So... I just, there, there was so much within that situation that was alarming. Uh, but again, me just getting a text message just said, you're gaining weight. I'm going to tell you two that your brother molested you. My brother never molested me. <laughs> no. I've never been molested at all. But you have got to be an evil somebody. And whoever runs with that story, 
Molestation is never T. It's never T. Weaponizing someone else's alleged trauma is never T. However, it's not true. And if it was true, I wouldn't mind coming clean about it. Because I'd make you look crazy by admitting it and saying, yeah, this happened and it was very sad and unfortunate. And so how do you look coming on camera laughing about it or thinking it's tea? It's not. It's not true. How dare you make up a rumor about my brother molesting me? That shit never happened. But for you to still be chasing my, different, my, my YouTube channel around and to say you're gaining weight. Okay, and I'm still cute. I haven't gained enough weight to the point where I'm so ugly that it makes you want to stop being obsessed and stalking me. So I clearly ain't lost too many cute points. My face cards still don't decline, but so what? So what I gained weight? You're still an ugly ass 40 year old nigga and you have a struggle beard and it don't connect. And you got to use the just for men to connect it. Like who cares that I've gained weight? Unless you want to lick my... And, and that goes for men and women. If there's a woman out there who mentions me gaining weight, it clearly means you want to lick me. So, I mean, I dare somebody run with this story about my brother. And I do have a brother that exists. But see, I don't talk about my family online because people are crazy just like this. Good, bad, or indifferent. I've had great holidays with my family most recently. But you won't catch me talking about it online whether we whether it be good or bad, because people are crazy. But I've spent a great amount of amazing time with my family lately over the last couple of holidays. So to make up things like this and to try to pass it off and whatever low life blogger runs with it. I'm going to tell someone on YouTube that you have issues with your mom. Me and my mom have had several times in my life where we haven't seen eye to eye. I dare somebody in this comment section right now watching this video, whether you're live on the bus or catching a replay chasing the bus, you tell me that you've always seen eye to eye with both your parents and that you've always agreed through and through. We're talking about a man who I was in a relationship with, who I did have a couple of issues with my mom when we were together. And of course he witnessed it because he was my boyfriend. But where's the crime in, in, in me and my mother not seeing eye to eye? Two strong-minded ass, very opinionated, lethal-lipped women. No, we don't see eye to eye all the time, but we damn sure are good now. We're talking about you, you trying to tell someone on YouTube that I have an issue with my mother. Whole time you call my mother's house and tell her bullshit about me. And she calls me up like, what the hell is going on? You stalk me. You harass me. You stalk my mother. You harass my mother. And then you say, I'm going to tell YouTube. All of these things. I'm going to tell YouTube you gained weight. Newsflash, anybody that's been watching me on YouTube already knows I gained weight. It's very evident. Look at my face. You see my extra little flat? What's next? What's next? What's next? And if you were sending, right? You, you, you said you already sent it to someone. If you were sending someone... This story, you already ruined the chances of it even doing well because your stupid ass sent me a message and said, I just, I just told, I just sent someone some information on YouTube and they're going to expose you. Okay. Well, here's the truth. I've never been molested. It's not a secret that I'm, that I've gained weight. So you sent someone information about me gaining weight. Nine times out of 10, whoever you sent it to, they already know I've gained weight. You find me the crime in that. I'm happy. I've been in a three-year relationship. The proof of me not always seeing eye to eye with my mom, where is that? How he finds you on YouTube. My name, my media name has always been the plainest Jane. No, I was never on YouTube dating him. Please, please just, I'm not coming at you queen quiche, but, but please, this, this is a man that I dated years ago. You know, I've been on YouTube for 10 years, right? So anybody that I was dating four years ago, they know about that. 
I've been a matter of fact, I've been on YouTube since 2010. So it's been 12 years since I've been on YouTube and I had my own radio show years ago in the no radio. My name has always been, that's always been my media name, the plainest Jane. So that's how he found me on YouTube. Be careful how you comment in this chat right now, because I'm, 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 I'm being transparent, right? And I'm coming to you all about some things, but if I need to block you, I will. And that, that's nothing against you, Queen Keith, but I'm just saying, thank you for you comment in this chat. Yeah, I, I, I've been on YouTube for 12 years, since 2010. So that's how he knows who I, the, the, the fact of the matter is I, I wanted to do YouTube. Matter of fact, when I was with him, I was trying to get back to YouTube, right? Cause I started YouTube. I picked it up. I put it down. I picked it up and put it down. And when life got too hard, uh, I, I, I wasn't able to follow through with it. And when I was with him, I was trying to get back to YouTube, but it was such a toxic relationship that I couldn't, I was never consistently in my right state of mind. I was always discombobulated, always. I got out like one, maybe two videos while I was in a relationship with him, but it was always hard because I always had to worry about sleeping at a friend's house because, you know, he 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 likes to stalk. He likes to sleep outside the house. He He's telling me he not, you know what I'm saying? When I finally did change the locks, he's leaving notes on my car every morning when I'm on my way to work. He's leaving breakfast on my car. I'm throwing it away every time. Um, he's sleeping in my parking lot because I won't let him in because he thinks that calling me every, every three minutes, you know, I wake up to 53 missed calls. They're all from him. He think he thinks that that's gonna, that that's going to do something. I had been trying to get back to YouTube and I, and I told him that that was my goal. Think about it. We were in a relationship. He knew my goals. When you're in a relationship, y'all, y'all talk about y'all goals. Y'all talk about y'all goals. And he knew that it was my goal to get back on YouTube. So now that he sees I had a channel, 102,000 subscribers, lost it. I'm starting over again. Okay, there's nothing that's going to stop me. How can I get these people on YouTube to think that she's a piece of shit? Hell, he tried to call my mother and get my mother to believe that I'm a piece of shit. And although me and my mother don't see eye to eye, she knows I'm not a piece of shit. She knows the shit that he was. He's literally calling my mother's phone and hanging up after he says what he got to say. That's middle school behavior. That's middle school behavior. You call and say, "Hey, is your refrigerator running? You better go catch it." Like we talking about a guy that's ten years older than me. You know what I'm saying? So, black women, I would love to hear from you if you have ever had someone who just um, doesn't accept rejection well. Um, because it's it's definitely a struggle. It's 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 definitely a a struggle dealing with someone who is angry because you and I'm like all you do is sit and call me disparaging things. It's clearly time for us to go our separate ways. Clearly, all you do is sit here and call me all these things and while they're untrue, but if you're calling me all these slurs and let's go our separate ways, how, why why would I stay with someone? who is going to call me these disparaging things every time I turn around. Why would I? Well, clearly you're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's go our separate ways. But he felt like calling me those things would make me feel small enough to make me go back to him because for a short amount of time, it was working in his mind because I would go back. And it's not like I would go back, like I would go running back. Nigga, I'm the one with the place to stay. You don't. It was a matter of me trying to save myself from his abuse. I'm t he would put his hands on me so bad that the neighbors would send complaints to the rental office. I couldn't chew or swallow anything for three days because he choked me up on the wall so bad. Choked me by my neck and held me up on the wall. My feet were dangling. There was a time I was putting his things out in the hallway and he knocked me down and dragged me back into my apartment with one leg, shut the door, and then that's when he did what he wanted to do to me. This is the guy that we're talking about that's shopping the story around to bloggers who don't like me. Will they run with it? Who knows? But for the bloggers or the blogger who's extremely obsessed with me, 
she's just as much of a stalker as him. She could run with it. Who knows? But um, I'm like, let me tell my story. Because me and my brother, I wouldn't say we're estranged. We just don't talk as often, you know? That's still my brother. <laughs> you stand up side by side together. There's no denying that that's my brother, okay? Like, there's no denying that we would have ever stand side by side together. Y'all be like, whoa, that is Jane with no hair. <laughs> like, but I'd be damned if anybody runs with a story about him molesting me when that's the farthest thing from the truth. I have never been molested, ever. And I, I even said that when I was covering the R. Kelly trial, people felt that I was so passionate about the way that I talked about those victims of sexual misconduct. They felt like, oh, you're clearly, no, I'm not triggered. This is wrong. I've never been molested. And I wouldn't have a reason to lie about that if so. So I, what I am being transparent about is my truth and what I have been through. what I have been through in general with a crazy ex stalking me. Attempting to, to tell YouTube a, a shitload of fallacies about me and my family. Meantime, whole time, this is a man who was isolated and his own family don't want to fuck with him. His own mother don't want to fuck with him because they realize how much of a loose cannon he is. So I didn't have a script for this video. And I know a lot of times when people are dying to communicate with you because you don't want to talk to them for whatever reason, they make up a shitload of lies because they feel like, well, let me tell this lie. And then she's going to respond because she knows it's not true. And then I'll get to talk to her. No, you won't. No, you won't. You know that this is not true. And I'm still not going to talk to you. And so any lies that you see about my life, and see, the thing is, you know, I don't do YouTube drama. When have you ever seen me respond to somebody on YouTube? There have been plenty of videos made about me from people who just dislike me, dislike my growth, dislike my personality, dislike my swag, dislike my skill set. Some will call them haters. Hey, would I flatter myself enough to call them haters? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People really upset. But I want to let you know the truth about a crazy ex who is dying to find anybody stupid enough to release a story about my past. I have a crazy ex. That will not leave me alone. That put his hands on me, that spit in my face, that slashed my tires kicked my car, dented my car, snatched my license plates off my car, then came back and dropped my license plates back off of my car. Anything you could imagine, this is what he's done. But I don't think that there's anybody with common sense that's going to run with this story. I could imagine a handful of people without common sense who may run with the story like this. But anybody with common sense... It's not going to run the story. Anybody with common sense listening to the story won't run with it. And it's just annoying to think that there's somebody that's so fixated on you. Three years later, you haven't uttered a word to them. And they, they refuse to stop sending you messages. But all they want to do is come through your phone and call you trash until the holidays come around. And then it's happy holidays because they think that like a, a little happy holiday text might get you to reach out and respond to them or something that's creepy as a black woman to know because you know naturally men are stronger than us it's creepy and the fact that obsessed people don't know that they're obsessed it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy restraint and order did it Staying away, no contact, blocking the numbers, did it. I block about 15 different numbers a week because he literally texts me, if not every day, every other day from a burner number. 
saying all types of disparaging things. Again, about two hours ago, he he told me, you know, you're gaining weight. Um, you've got mental issues, you've got parent issues, and your brother molested you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell somebody on YouTube that's gonna expose you. Oh, okay, buddy. What you thought that that was gonna get me to respond? You trying to ruin my YouTube reputation, baby? I'm a small fish again. I don't even bring in any views. That's that's the fact of the matter. Anybody trying to run with this story that's full of bullshit and a whole bunch of shit that there's no receipts to prove any of it, you're not even going to get any views or get any traction. I'm a small fish again. I'm not... Now, don't get me wrong. I still know who I am on the inside. I'm still the plainest chain that was mentioned by the New York Times, right? But I'm not a content creator with over 100,000 subscribers anymore. I've got like 7.71 .71 subscribers. So running a story on me, it's not even lucrative. Who's checking for me right now? And I'm not calling myself a nobody, but I'm, I'm, I'm being realistic about this. If there was a low life tabloid that wanted to run a story on me, I'm honestly not even worth your time. You'd be better off um, talking about bigger celebrities or, or bigger YouTubers or, um, I don't know, Kevin Samuels, if, if you're not know, like, you be better off sticking to people like that. I'm not going to bring in the views. And, and if you bring out a story about my brother molesting you, it's good about my brother molesting me. It's going to make you look more crazy than anything. The internet just got done dragging Monique for weaponizing somebody else's real life trauma, let alone for it to be made up trauma. But it just goes to show, you know, when 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 men can't have you, they will say and do anything. And there are so many men out here who cannot accept rejection. I had a guy come through my inbox the other day on Facebook. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Just checking on you because you ain't posted nothing in a while. Whole time they called themselves dragging me in 2020 about something to no avail and going live for their three fans or followers to call me a piece of shit. And they even told me in the last message they sent me, I won't ever be in your inbox again. Meanwhile, this is a guy who was thirsty. Every time I posted something, it's hard eyes, hard eyes, hard eyes. They found me to be so cute. I told him, I'm like, yo, you said you wouldn't stay in my, you said you wouldn't come in my inbox anymore. I expect you to stick to that. Damn, I see why you still single. Whoa, buddy. If you scroll up to the last message you sent me in 2020, you said, I won't ever be in your inbox again. And mind you, you didn't like a comment that I made on my page. But now all of a sudden you want to insult me by calling me single, which isn't true. When did I become single? I've been in a relationship for three years. I said, no, actually, you're single with the struggle beard. I'm single because I want to. And, and bitches love me. And if I wanted a crazy woman like you, I could have one easily. Yeah. Not true. I can see it. I can hear it. Look at you. Look at you. I just left your page. You post Ninja Turtles every day. A different picture of the Ninja Turtles every day. You're 33 years old with a beard that doesn't connect. The bitches don't want you. All of your photos on your page look like the images were taken when Instagram first launched on somebody's fucking Nokia or somebody's flip phone. The bitches don't want you. But the first thing you did when I told you, brother, leave me alone because you told me you would leave me alone. I expect you to stick to that. Here you go trying to insult me. I see why you're single. Yeah, I'm not single. But here I am calling you single when you confirm it. And then now you're going crazy. This is sad. You're crazy. You're petty for holding on to that. No, you disrespected me in 2020. I didn't forget. You never apologized. But even if you did, the apology stays where it is. And I said, no. That's it. These niggas, why, again, when I tell you that niggas are entitled to accessing you. See, I get it. I'm a vibe. I'm a vibe. Anybody who I've ever been friends with or we've communicated with, laughed, joked, had a couple drinks, whatever, I have amazing energy in, in, in conversation. And when they realize they can't access that anymore, you can't come through my inbox and tell a little jokey joke or ask me about a current trending topic or something going on, and you can't, they, they, they throw a fit when you throw down your boundaries. Yes, Ninja Turtles. Yes. A different picture of Ninja Turtles every day. Motherfucking Facebook page, Ghost Town. One like on a Ninja Turtle post from one of his niggas who also is into that shit. Bitches love me. That's where you got it fucked up. 
I could have any woman I want. I just, yeah, you, you sound like a seventh grader trying to prove that he doesn't have B.O. when the girls like him when they don't. All I did was ask you to abide by what you said. Scroll up. I, I just, and, and I've had that happen with a couple of different, and especially being in a male-dominated industry, I do have a radio background. Being in a male-dominated industry, they'll, they'll, they'll cross you. They'll say whatever about you. And then when they want to turn back around and have a conversation or get some clout or collaborate or they see you got something going, oh, how can we work together? We can't. Oh, damn. It's like that. You that petty. No, I'm not petty. I'm hip. I don't want to have anything to do with your energy. Your energy is funky. It's not conducive. And I don't even like telling niggas that because they get really offended. All I do is I stick to the basics. No, I'm good. I'm over here. They can't really handle the real conversation about how or why you don't want to have anything to do. But it's, 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 it's respect. It's respect. I, I respectfully said, I'm good. I don't want to communicate with you. You said you would never be in my inbox again, but here you are. I expect you to stick to what you said. He blew a whole motherfucking, it, 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 a whole fit. You know, it, it, it really sucks that as black women that we have to be careful with how we reject a man because he's going to lose his mind. I remember there was a video that I had did a while ago on the old channel before it got deleted. Um, these women were out at a birthday party at a table and this man had came up and was trying to holler at him. And the women just weren't having it. One of them said, no, I'm not interested. Another woman started laughing. The guy goes to his trunk and literally gets a gun and starts shooting. So it, it sucks to think that we have to think three times. How can I nicely reject this man without him losing his mind and me being in danger? And we got to think this through. And then we got to coddle y'all feelings as, 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 you know, coddle a man's feelings in order to, because that's the safer alternative rather than just saying, I don't want to have anything to do with you. No, thank you. I don't know if you haven't been walking up the street and never got cat called. Hey, hey, purple leggings. You say you're not interested. Aren't you ugly, bitch? They do that. You at a gas station, just try to mind your business and pump your gas, light or dark outside. And you don't want to have anything to do with the man that's hollering at you. It's a shame you have to think three times about how you say, I'm not interested. Or you got to fake take his number just to appease him at that moment because you just don't know. Because you just don't no. It's 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 crazy. They 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 absolutely slander you when you when you reject them. If I'm so trash, move on to somebody who's who's treasure. That's cool. You want to call me trash? I've accepted that you're gonna call me trash. But why are you why are you obsessed with trash for three years now? You come through my phone every chance you get to either call me trash or send me a dick pic. So now all of a sudden you want to fuck trash. You switch between calling me trash, calling me a slut in the past around, to sending me dick pics and trying to link up for sex or drinks. And you go back and you can't find the in insanity within that. I just wonder what is it going to take for him to let me go? And I truly don't think that he's ever going to let me go because he's never going to find true happiness. He's not going to find a woman that he, you know, that he really gets to deal with and fall in love with and and he's so busy with that woman and, and maybe having a family or getting married and a job and a career. He's never going to find that because he's unhinged and he's unwell and he refuses to accept it. So therefore, the problem is never going to be able to 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 remedy his sickness because he's sick upstairs. He's sick. There were times where he wouldn't even let me leave my own apartment. And I just dealt with it because I felt like if I keep trying to leave, he's really going to beat me up. I was sleeping at a friend's house for two weeks because I knew he was so angry and he would find a way to break in. Come back home to my house after two weeks after sleeping on a friend's couch. I could see all types of dents in the doorway. He'd been trying to break in, break in, break in. And that's when I came back and found he wrote a slut lives here on my door and my mailbox. And I said, if my car had been there, he would have spray painted that shit on my car too. That's why I was really sleeping at the friend's house. 
So, I mean, I guess making me feel so little. And, and here's the thing. When I would be scared straight, right, to the point where I would be telling him what he wanted to hear just so I could feel safer, um, he liked it, right? He felt like as long as I have her scared or intimidated, she's going to want to be with me. And the nerve of you to think that I'm going to stay in a relationship where I'm constantly scared of you because you have put your hands on me several times in the past. The nerve of you to think that as long as you can scare me enough, she's going to stay here. But when I tell you this was the movie that I was watching, that's exactly how it went. He, he had the girl scared enough and had her out in the middle of nowhere. What else can you do? And she pretended to be into it. And then she finally backed away and she ran. And then he shot her a couple of times. And she's just like, you know, out there in the wilderness. But she was coddling his feelings for a minute. And, and, and the way that they flip it on you, you'll find yourself wondering, what did I do? Damn, did I do something to cause this? Because they just keep repeating the same thing to the point where you might start believing it. And you will start, and that's, that's what gaslighting is, right? They'll keep telling you something that is not true, but they repeated it over and over and over again so many times that you start to wonder, damn, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And you'll realize that these are the type of men that you'll deal with who will literally break you down in any way possible. Whether they put their hands on you or not, they'll break you down emotionally, mentally, psychologically. And they'll put you back together. Because once they break you down that way, other things in your life become affected. You're not your best at work. You're not your best at your hobby. If you're even still entertaining your hobby, they have isolated you from your family and friends and they'll break you down so much. And, 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 and it's a tragedy. Then they'll begin to love bomb you and do things to build you back up because they see that you're in such a dark space. And by the time it's all said and done and they put you back together and you're grateful for that because you feel better. You don't realize that's the person that broke you and put you back together. But it's a cycle. You get to feeling too good or too whatever. Then they're going to break you again. And then your soul discombobulated, your soul disoriented, that you just appreciate any form of feeling of normalcy or sweet gestures or something that makes you feel like things are getting back to the way that they used to be before I was so goddamn broken. But this person has you on a merry-go-round of I'm going to break you. I'm going to put you back together. I'm going to break you. I'm going to put you back together. And, and, and it's a sick cycle. It's a really sick cycle. So I didn't want to come on here and cry. Right? I stopped myself from crying like one time early in this video. I didn't want to come on here and cry, right? Um, but I just wanted to have a moment where I'm just um, being transparent and sharing with you all what my previous experience was. Um... I don't address issues much and I don't align anyway because there's no there's no like solution in that. I don't discuss my issues online ever at all. And I, you know, don't ever think that just because I'm not addressing issues online, it doesn't mean that I have them. Um, so I don't mind this one piece of transparency, this one time of just letting you all in two things, just in case y'all hear something, you know that it's bullshit because I've already you know, let you know about this crazy person who was willing to do anything and say anything to get my attention or to get other people to try to say things about me that's going to hurt my feelings or bring me down. <laughs> but I don't mind this one moment of, of, of transparency and relatability because I know I'm not alone as a black woman who has an ex that just refuses to let go, that's obsessive, that stalks them, that harasses them, that you've had to file a restraining order on, they put their hands on you.
it happened years ago and I, I i would just i would just appreciate it if it was in my rear view as if it was that it was years ago and you know but unfortunately this person is still you know they're still obsessed you know which makes it more new um You know, yeah, all the way down to commenting on my weight gain. I don't give a fuck that I've gained weight. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't care. I'm still me. I'm still me. I can still touch my toes. I ain't no big fat roly poly oly. I, I will call myself fat, right? Yeah, I'm fat. And? And? I plan on starting a family. <laughs> I plan on being fat at another point in time in life when I get pregnant in the near future. And um, if, if anything, not to say that I'm not, I know that I'm already a relatable person. Um, but this is just one of those moments where, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, relatability. You know, I, 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 I'm, you know, a real person, and I just felt like it was time. It was time to talk about this, and it's just ironic that I had tweeted about this literally days ago on Twitter because, yeah, this crazy ass ex does exist. Does exist, and the fact of the matter is, I've I've gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight so many times in my life. I'm telling you, there are times when I was. Skinny as a pencil to the point where people thought I was sick and I wasn't. And then I got big and then I got small again. And, uh, you know, and even my chest went through that. I'm like going from a B cup to a D to a double D back down to a B back. To, you know what I mean? And, and then I'll throw away all my old stuff. And then I got to buy new stuff. Like my weight goes up and down. That's just part of being a woman. You know, I'm plump. Okay. I'm juicy. Okay. And. Will I be this way forever? Probably not. But I'm still fine. I'm still me. I'm still happy as hell. And that's just that. That's that. Domestic violence is not a joke. Even after the person and finished slapping you around, hitting you up doing whatever they could do like it's not a joke and for that person to still be harassing you years later for that person to still be as sick and as unhinged and to think that because they're using burner numbers that they're untouchable and to think that you haven't been talking to people about ways to get them caught up on their probation to think that their ip address from their phone and their laptop can't be traced because keep in mind, I do still have a restraining order against you, bro. Because I know you're watching. Clearly, if you've seen I gain weight, you're watching my videos. Don't think that you're safe because you're using burner numbers. I know your parole officer's name. And I've just been letting all this shit add up that you've been doing. And telling people on YouTube, sending them information, it's not a good look, bro. You got one more strike until they... Click, clank, your ass away for good. So I just, thank you, Harold. Thank you. I know I had talked to you about this at some point before. And yeah, it's still, that was years ago when I was speaking to you about this. And yeah, it's still going on. It is still going on. So um, someone says, is this her story? Yeah, this is my story. Number one rule to journalism is to never become the story. But this was a story that I had to tell. Um, I refuse to let somebody else tell a, uh, to, to give a false narrative or for somebody to be taking information from somebody that I had to file a restraining order on, somebody that's still stalking me, somebody that's making up lies about my brother molesting me. I refuse to let people run with a story from that person. And if somebody decides to run with the story from that person, after I put this out there, it goes to, to show how unhinged they are. 
This person is a predator and they prey on weak, lonely people. And at the point in time in my life when, he, when I con connected with him, I was lonely. I wasn't weak until he started doing things and, and you know, basically isolating me. You know what I'm saying? Um, from friends and family. So, yeah, I'm a very strong person, okay? Um, and part of why I'm so strong today is based off of everything that I have been through in the past. And that's why I don't take no shit present day. Like, I'm not having it. I had boundaries then. He didn't like the boundaries. And he got worse. And then I, I was in between laying down a boundary, coddling his feelings. Laying down a boundary, coddling his feelings. And now I'm just to the point where, no, I'm not taking no shit from nobody. I don't give a shit who you are. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is my story. And yeah, it felt a little weird sitting here telling it, right? Because I don't, I don't really share a whole bunch about me in, in this capacity, right? I don't mind talking about like other light things and whatever but like this really isn't me to be talking about like my business my not so positive business it's not but you know it is what it is is there a cop or lawyer in here is it there laws against yeah but you know it um it's it's a process to having it um addressed and sometimes crazy people they know how to get around certain things or they think that they're smarter than the system or the person that they're preying upon so um you know i'll just leave it there i have a lot of stuff that um i have aggregated uh with regards to this crazy 40 year old stalker that doesn't want to leave me alone, you know? Uh, and I, I'm, I'm able to compartmentalize a lot of feelings and, and, um, and still be able to navigate the things that I prioritize, my hobbies and everything else. Um, but yeah, that is, that's that. I think that's it. Um, I know this video probably was full of me kind of rambling a little bit. Um, because I didn't have a script for it, but, um, my stalker didn't in my attack have me. Mm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, Jane is a great example of no matter how beautiful you are, you can still be a victim. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, the correlation of being beautiful and being a victim, the more beautiful you are, the more, the more likely you are to even be a victim. Not to say that people who aren't as, as you know, aesthetically pleasing aren't victims, but being beautiful, not me talking about being beautiful like it's a burden, but but honest, like, you know, you go out places and people will say anything outside their mouth to you, especially like there was this, People will say anything out their mouth to you when you're beautiful. And it's you can't go anywhere without people like bothering you and you don't want to be bothered. It's like, no, thank you. You got to deal with snarky remarks and rejecting men and men not accepting that well. Um, there's somebody I follow on YouTube, Real Talk with Yanni, and she just talks about, you know, being a pretty woman, it comes with a lot of bullshit. You attract a lot of dusty ass niggas when you are beautiful because they're just hyenas drooling over you and and you know they don't have any cool they don't have any tact and you know sometimes it can be annoying you like you just you just want to be out minding your business without niggas hounding you and without you having to think or fake taking a number or fake some engagement or fake interest just so that you got to look around and realize we the only two people around here can i really just you can't say fuck off i'm not interested you can't say Leave me alone. I don't, I'm not interested. You can't, sometimes a no thank you ain't even enough. Damn, bitch, really? That's it? 
Like I seen this one video of a woman getting out her car at a gas station. And all these men were like around her and she wasn't interested. And so they all circled her and it, it was just horrifying. It's like, damn, this is why as women like going to the gas station at night, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. But thank goodness I had a support system. When this guy did know where I lived, when he knew where I worked. And he was moments away from getting at work. I really had to calm down my male friends from. Because I'm like, no, no to kill a mockingbird over here. No, I could have just let them do what they wanted to do. But I'm like, no. So, you know, yeah, it's it, it, it can be pretty dangerous out here rejecting the guy. That's why it's important, um, to keep whatever you need to keep on you, on you, and that's all I'll say. Anytime I'm out, I always have something on me. So you can try it if you want to. Um, but I do go to the gun range. And I have other things that I keep on me as well. So, you know, I used to be living in fear. Um, and every now and then the fear still creeps in because it's, it's just creepy to think that there's somebody that is that possessive over you and your person. But whatever. I feel like I'm definitely rambling now. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um I appreciate all of y'all who are here. It is five o'clock in the morning and it's 80 of y'all here right now. So I appreciate y'all so, 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 so much. I really do. I can't even tell my folks because once I do, they won't, they won't stop. Ain't no taking it back. Right. That's, but you know, I'm like, I had to find a different friend to either stay over my house every night when he was at the height of that stuff, knocking at my door, banging on my door, hitting my buzzer, calling my phone 80 times in a row, or I had to go sleep at somebody else's house. Um, and it was just, it was just a lot. It was just a lot. Um, those who abuse like the challenge or the process of breaking down others, it's a false sense of power and manipulation sicko. That's true. That is absolutely true. And that's true for people, you know, who you were or were once or you are in a relationship with, or even people who are just obsessed with you and don't like you online. Like that's, that's the only thing that makes them feel powerful because truly there's nothing else really going for them in their real lives. They get victories off of negatively affecting other people or they get victory off of, um, that, that, that's the only time that they can feel fulfilled or successful is by antagonizing someone else. That's another thing. They'll just antagonize you, antagonize you and say a million things. And then when you finally respond, all of a sudden they're the victim. All of a sudden they're the victim of whatever has happened. They're the victim. You know, so some people, their only skill in life is to bother other people. They're not successful at shit else. Whether it be the videos that they make, all they want to do is bother or get under someone else's skin because they don't have a job. If you're watching, I know you don't have a job and your only skill is to bother other people. That's it. That's it. And to say negative things about other people because you feel like it's going to make you feel better because there's nothing going on. And when you shut your laptop, there's nothing else going on in your world, in your real life. Nothing that makes you feel great, that validates you. No hobbies. Your hobby is fucking with other people. You have no peace. That's it. That's it. So look, y'all, thank you for listening. Um, this video was very uncomfortable for me to do. It was uncomfortable, but I'm sure 
you know, the conversation about black women being protected or unprotected and how to cope or deal with um, a stalking ass ex. Um, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had more often. Um, and I can't wait to see the comments and see what other women have to say and, and how they dealt with it, you know? So I hope y'all enjoy y'all holiday. I don't celebrate the 4th of July. I don't feel like the way America has treated us black people. I just don't feel like they need a birthday celebration this year. I mean, they, they've never deserved a birthday celebration, right? I celebrated Juneteenth, okay? I celebrated Juneteenth. <laughs> so I'm not celebrating the holiday. I'm celebrating having a day off, though. That's what I am celebrating. So I don't go back to work until Tuesday. We've got a long weekend because of the holiday. And I can find the good in that, right? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Professional trolls with PhDs. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. It definitely needs to happen. I don't normally hear about those things. I don't like talking about it. I don't feel like it's anybody's business that I have a stalker, that I have a, 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 an obsessed stalker, and it's been three years and counting. Um, he'll probably still be stalking me when he gets into a nursing home where he can't even wipe his ass when he shit no more. Um, I don't think that anything is ever going to stop him until he becomes decrepit and can't type. <laughs> um. But I'm like, why not? Why not share it and debunk anything before it comes out, you know? So here we are. I love you all. I hope that you all stay beautiful, black, and blessed until the next video. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter. Um, especially if you feel like the note if you feel like sometimes your notifications don't come through. Um Follow me on Twitter. And if you are subscribed to my tweets, you can see when I go live, I tweet it out right before we go live so that you're in here. I see a couple of you here that literally only follow me on Twitter and don't follow me on YouTube. So I know that you got here from Twitter. So um, it's always something going down on Twitter. So make sure you follow me there, especially if you want an entryway into Black Twitter. I'm going to get off of here. I had another video I wanted to give you all. Um, I won't. I won't say what I wanted to talk about. I'll just save it and come talk. Well, I mean, technically today, right? It's 519 in the morning. So um, let us go ahead and get off of here. I'll talk to you later today on this 4th of July. And we'll be talking about some things that are going on in the entertainment industry, but also the real world too. There's been some stuff going on. So I'm trying to decide if I want it to be the Black News Bus or if I want to do two separate videos. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. But I'm looking forward to spending some time with you all later on today, on the 4th of July, on my day off. Okay? Y'all are amazing. Thank you all for listening. I know this video probably wasn't the most cohesive piece of content that I've made. I, prefer, I like to be very linear with the way that I lay my videos down and my talking points. But this was more, excuse me, one of those laid back. Um, more relaxed form type videos, okay? So I'm going to get off here and I'm going to relax. I guess it feels good to have gotten this off my chest with you all, although I feel like it was none of y'all's, none of y'all's business what I've been going through. But I know that the strength in me actually sharing it It means something. So, y'all have a good night. Okay. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.